Trump reacted to yesterday's NBC News exclusive report about what happened during a meeting at the Pentagon last July by attacking the press. Oh, okay the seemingly freedom of the press. He tweeted yesterday morning, quote, with all of the fake news coming out of NBC and the networks, at what point is it appropriate to challenge their license? Bad for the country. And again last night, network news has become so partisan, distorted, and fake that licenses must be challenged and, if appropriate, revoked, not fair to public. To be clear, the networks themselves do not hold federal licenses. Their individual television stations do. The president said more in a rally-style interview with Fox News uh, held in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and also earlier in the day in the Oval Office. If I was just watching television, you don't know whether or not, because, you know, you're just watching a report. But when you're the one being written about, you know if it's good or bad, and it's always, they try and make it negative. So the media has turned, I call it fake media. It's fake. fake it's news. so much fake news. And we you have to understand. agree with that, fake news? You know. It's frankly disgusting the way the press is able to write whatever they want to write. And people should look into it. No, the press should speak more honestly. I mean, I've seen tremendously dishonest press. It's not even a question of distortion, uh, like the question that was just asked before about 10 times the nuclear capability. I know the capability that we have, believe me, and it is awesome. It is massive. And so when they make up stories like that, that's just made up. And uh, the generals will tell you that. And then they have their sources that don't exist. In my opinion, they don't exist. Uh, they make up the sources. There are no sources. The NBC report does source three identi right. unidentified officials who were in the room at the Pentagon when the president reportedly made his comments. And now at least one member of the president's party is taking exception with Trump's rhetoric against the press. Republican Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska put out this statement last night, quote, Mr. President, words spoken by the President of the United States matter. Are you tonight recanting the oath that you took on January 20th to preserve, protect, and defend the First Amendment? Mark, uh, of all the things, the shocking things the President has said, um, and he said so many, um, you know, call, you know, channeling Chairman Mao and Joseph Stalin by calling the media enemy of the people. Um, saying that First Amendment rights, saying the ability of newspapers to write what they want to write is, quote, disgusting and someone should look into it, may be the, the most frightening uh, of, of, of all and the most disgusting. And again, as we, we are starting to hear people talking more and more about the 25th Amendment. We, Steve Bannon warning the president. That's, that's what will remove him from office, uh, if, if anything removes him from office. Uh, Tom Barrick, his longtime friend, just saying he's shocked and stunned by what he's seeing from Donald Trump. That this is, that, and Bob Corker saying he's, we could add all of this up. And now you have a president who is actually uh, dismissing the most sacred right Americans have had since 1787, the right of free speech. It's an attack on the media, to be sure, but more profoundly, it's an attack on the First Amendment. The president should be aware, perhaps he is, that we've reached a new phase amongst people around him, that the, the whispers that you used to hear only on the left about the notion that he should be removed or that there's a presidency in crisis, that is now said by people who are friends of the president, who are advisors to the president. Their concern about his state of mind and his ability to do the job is higher than it has been since he got sworn in. And comments like he made yesterday only feed that. And Caddy, he said it several times. Uh, I mean, he, he talked about taking licenses. Well, he can't take away NBC's license. It's, it's not how it's done. But then saying that it was disgusting that newspapers could write what they wanted to write ignores the fact that, again, since 1787, the Supreme Court has recognized that political speech is the most protected, the most valuable, the most unassailable speech that Americans have. There, there is, there is uh, no, no challenging political speech as free speech and the press's ability to report on it.
Yeah, and I don't know if the if the president understands how news organizations work, but obviously NBC, the BBC, every news organization that we have worked for has strict protocols in place that mean that they cannot write whatever they want to write. You have to do your reporting. You know, BBC, we have to have two sources. This story had three uh, unidentified separate sources before it was reported. So news organizations are very careful about what they put out there in the public domo domain as news. Um, and I don't know if the president understands what those editorial protocols are in place, but uh, somebody around him ought to inform him of them. For somebody who wa watches an awful lot of television, mm -hmm. uh, you think he might be more curious about the way news organizations actually gather them. And news. Willie, what's, uh, what's, uh, what, what, what again proves for his friends and advisors who say the president's out of touch uh, and, and they're getting growing more and more worried about the president, uh, he doesn't even know that those sources are people who work for him. Right. And, and uh, this has been, you know, he screams about leaks inside the White House all the time. Well, they're the sources. They're the people talking. And he looks completely clueless when he goes out and says things like that. This has been happening almost since the beginning of his administration. This kind of reporting that comes from inside the room. You had three people inside this meeting that allegedly led to Rex Tillerson calling the President of the United States a moron. But it's because they're concerned. I mean, you could go, this is... This is authoritarianism 101. You delegitimize the press, you delegitimize de your opponents, and then you try to destroy them. Luckily, in the United States, we have a constitution that stands in the way of the president doing that. But he's saying to people who support him and to the American people, don't believe your eyes and your ears when it comes to things that criticize me. Don't believe what you're saying. Fake news, fake news, fake news. There's no license to be revoked. There's nothing he's going to do or can do, thank goodness, because we have such a strong system. But you can go to a history textbook 101 any authoritarian in history has done this early and often, delegitimize the press and then try to destroy it. It's yeah. to be dealt with. And I yes, mean, sir. anyone in there, if they think they don't have a responsibility at this point to deal with yeah. what is clearly uh, an unraveling, at the very least, the great of unraveling. this man's personality. Uh, and, and Mike, it, the, um, th these are words that you would expect from Turkey. Uh, out of Turkey. These are words that you would ex expect out of Russia. These are words you would expect out of the Philippines. Where you said we, we he, the President of the United States, actually, all day yesterday, not self-correcting himself because it's impossible for anyone to correct him, and he certainly can't correct himself. Continuing to say that he wants to, he wants to trample First Amendment rights. To Mark's point. Uh, there seems to me, in conversations with a few people in the White House over the past, there seems to have been a change in attitude over the past three or four weeks, where now you have people working in the White House talking about the president's emotional stability on a day-to-day -day basis. And what he's doing, he seems intent on further dividing a country that is already pretty well divided. Mm -hmm. And he has injected a fever within certain elements of this country, his, his, his followers, I don't know what it is, 25, 35 percent, we don't know, but a fever in them about the press. And it's taken hold. It's taken hold. And while he's done this, you have other disruptive elements going on in the White House. He has chosen to try and destroy health care. Uh, he has chosen to try and destroy environmental regulations. He has chosen to try and destroy the Iran Accord, TPP, NAFTA. All of this is going on, and it's incredibly dangerous. Let me yeah. say three, the three things that have focused the minds of people around the president. One is the North Korea face-off, where people are feeling very skittish about how it's being handled. Two is the Mueller investigation, which is putting a lot of pressure on people in the White House. And three is the reality that they may end this year not passing a single major piece of legislation. Those three things have combined to create a lot of awareness that what's happening, the way the president's conducting himself in office isn't working. And what he did yesterday is only alienating people more because they know it is a, it is a reality show distraction. And, and Bob Corker's statement questioning the president's fitness, questioning whether the president's actions were leading us towards nuclear war, towards World War III from the most powerful Republican on Capitol Hill, words that have not been challenged by his fellow Republicans on the Hill.
No, and and you know, obviously from somebody that he needs if he's going to do any of the things that Mark says the White House is so worried um, that he's not doing. I mean, I did wonder about the press thing, whether this is Trump's deliberate attempt to get us all talking about the press and you put out that shiny object which he feels until him has uh, for him has worked of, you know, chuck out fake news, it's it's red meat to his base and and you know, the more we make this a story, the more we talk about it, the more are we actually enabling his ability to froth about something that whilst real things are going on, NAFTA is about to fall apart, we may be about to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal, uh, major cuts have been made in environmental protections this week, and so women's health rights have been rolled back, but throw out fake news, we will all talk about it, uh, and I think, you know, we have to be careful about the way we approach this story. But it's yeah. more than fake news, it's a challenge to yeah. the First Amendment, as Mark said. I'll it's go back wrapped to up as a challenge to the First Amendment, but it's not going to happen, right? So. We hope not, yeah. I mean, but I, I want to go back to what Senator Sass said. That's a Republican from Nebraska stepping forward and saying something that should be easy and obvious to every United States senator, whether a Democrat or Republican. I think what he's saying is we can't accept this as normal. We can't accept and roll our eyes at things the president right. says and says, oh, there he goes again. You have to step forward and remind people, remind the American public that this is not acceptable, that this is not normal. And I'll be interested to see if other senators, Democrats and Republicans alike, come forward and challenge what the president said yesterday. People, Mika, need to stop. Senators need to stop. They need to listen and they need to understand that the president of the United States said that he was going to look into uh, undermining and actually destroying the most sacred right, uh, constitutional right that Americans have had, again, since 1787. Uh, and uh, the fact that he's talking that way, in a way no other president has ever spoken in American history, showing complete ignorance of the Constitution, the law, 240 years of precedent, shows, again, that he is just, he's disconnected. Not fit. And I think we're at the point well, where the conversation has changed. Well, easily not fit. I know, but it's got, I think the, the conversation has changed where there are people beginning to, um, to show that even those close to him perhaps might feel that way as well. Um, well, we have a report on that coming up. Bit. Yeah, we'll talk about that.